It's day three of 100 Days of Code. You might be looking at the title and going, concatenating? Well, concatenation is just a complicated word that means our ability to glue together bits of text and variables together to make nice full sentences that look good in your output. So you were probably annoyed yesterday that your output looked a bit broken. Everything was going on its own line. Well, let's fix that. In this program, we have printed everything out in a single line, which is quite frankly amazing. And the way we've done that is by placing the different objects we want printed within those brackets on that print statement. Remember, the print statement prints everything out in brackets. But for every different object, we just need to separate it with a comma. And that comma is magic because we can put in as many different objects as we like as long as they are separated by a comma. In this example, I'm going to print out the value of my name, then the sentence is going to be chowing down on, then the value of my lunch, then the text very soon. Let's see that work. Aha! So, a fully comprehensive sentence that is all there in one big block. All achieved by the superpower of commas to join together objects. And of course, you can join together as many objects as you want. But what could go wrong? Well, maybe you've got something like this. Once again, invalid syntax is an error, and when I run it, I get the same thing. Can you spot what's gone wrong there? What are we missing from that bracket? Well, I want to join together three different objects, but what's the symbol I need to tell the print statement that they are different objects? It's that magic comma, and we're missing it again. So if I include the comma after the first object and after the second object, that separates them and we should be good to go. Boom, we're sorted. Here's another common error. Now, once again, it's not that sort of error where we get a red underline. So let's see what's going on. Well, it's working. Oh, it's that same error we've seen before, where it's literally printing out the names of the variables instead of the contents. How do we fix that last time? Well, we made sure that variables were not within speech marks. The only thing in speech marks should be strings of text. Fancy a challenge? Once again, I've put a bunch of code together to make a custom song generator <laughs> that I've sort of broke. So if you can fix it for me, I'd be more than happy. Your challenge for today is to come up with the ultimate wacky recipe maker because we've all been there. When we were kids, we all tried mixing Nutella with mac and cheese and pizza. And let's be honest, it wasn't probably the most successful recipe ever. But let's reinvigorate those days of yore and build a silly recipe generator. I'm going to ask you to ask your users for several variables. A type of food, a type of plant, a method of cooking, a word to describe a burned food and the name of a household item. And I'd like you to output them all together with these words and phrases in between so that if we enter a bunch of content, we get a silly recipe like this. A saute mac and cheese with ruined cactus on a bed of hammers. Now that sounds oddly appealing actually, doesn't it? Maybe you want to remix that and make it your own. Maybe you want to extend it, add more items, maybe add a starter, main, and a dessert to the options. Whatever you do, make sure you copy the URL, share it on social media with a hashtag, replit 100 days of code, and make sure that your followers, your friends, and random people from across the internet can make their random recipes and share it back with you. Now, day four tomorrow, it's our first challenge. We're gonna put all these skills together and you're gonna make something really cool.